Today on the Mary Lee Show, I am conducting a mastermind. And the purpose of it is I want you to see how organically we build relationships. The people at the table are, don't know each other at all, other than the cast, and they were giving, given questions that seemed to be irrelevant. And so they were having a lot of fun with it. They're laughing together, they're getting to know each other, and by the end of the experiment, they give some really good insight to each other that was encouraging, insightful, and ultimately they bonded. So let's watch to see what happened, and then I'll come back with my perspective. Yeah, the thing I chose was, was a unicorn, and the, uh, I'm not too sure of the reason why I chose it. It was just the first thing that popped into my mind. I really would love to be like a puppy, like a Labrador. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think I'd be a liver. Oh. <laughs> Very interesting. Liver. Because wow. that was what we talked about last time. I think I'd like to, if I could be music, that'd be really cool. Cause, Rafa, yeah, what would you be? Uh, a lion. <laughs> I would be a tree. <laughs> tree. <laughs> I think I would be a whale. That was yours. Uh, probably like a sweet tiger. <laughs> um, well, originally I was thinking maybe like an oak or a redwood, but then I kind of expanded that and just thought maybe I'd be a forest as a whole. But I think a coral reef suits me a little better. Mm. And I mean, it's just an area of nur nourishment or nourishment. Uh, one of the outer space telescopes. Why are you so nerdy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, either a bird or a whale. Um, I want to be a mirror. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, the reason why I would be a unicorn is because they're cool. Um, <laughs> The reason, or the reason why I, I'm not too sure. I think it's just because it's a, uh, it's something that makes kids happy, like something that's not real, but it's there. <laughs> well, I chose a puppy because I was thinking about my childhood. You know, like when I was growing up, I had a really friendly dog, and I got well with him. So a lot of my childhood memories have to do with, with my dog. Aww. So. I would like to be a liver. Um, it works well with. Um, other organs, it cleanses the body, um, it works um, hard and a lot of times a little harder than it should but it still functions and it helps the body, yeah. Power behind it is mm -hmm. kind of intriguing, you can affect people's emotions, you can bring people together, you can force people away from each other, there's a lot of power behind it and also um, it's something that everybody can relate to as well. I feel so peaceful when I'm around trees. I love to go on hikes and look at them. Um, trees have a lot of cool characteristics, I think, that it would be good to have just as a person. Um, they renew the air around them, so they're kind of like a positive force for what's near them. They're um, these big creatures that, you know, are free. They don't really have to assert themselves to any other animals or just... They get to chill and roam the oceans and the world and just not have to worry about much. Doesn't seem like you just open your mouth and eat and like <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'll be a tiger because they're stealthy. <laughs> sweet tiger. Yeah, I'll be, be a sweet tiger because they're stealthy and they're majestic. They can jump really far. <laughs> they can climb trees and like swimming. And they're beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah. And I really do see trees like that. And I mean, I mean the ocean is just more of me. I mean, the corals, corals, ocean tree. So that's that's why I'd be a coral reef. Um, I I would like to be a, a deep space uh, telescope only because it's something that its only job is to view the universe as it is, to view everything as it is. It's because it seems like they have a, a fun life. Ah. <laughs> Hashtag yellow. The way they grab their women. <laughs> <laughs> a bird or a whale because they perceive them as free. 
uh, because they, they don't have boundaries and they travel wherever they want to. So specifically migratory birds and migratory whales. <laughs> no, because I, I want to reflect what people think of themselves. If, you know, how they see themselves. I want to reflect people. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> well, I want to be a, a unicorn because I want to be able to prove my existence. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to be able to say, like, I made, I made you rainbow school. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because after a while, you know, a puppy usually grows up and then the kid grows up too and they leave him alone and sometimes the dog is just by himself for hours on end. And your happy puppy life ends. Oh, <laughs> <that's so sad. laughs> that got real sad. It went from really adorable to just straight up miserable. Like, oh, oh, oh. Um, I wouldn't want to be a lover because um, people abuse it. Um, you work for them, work overdrive, and they still abuse you. It's a violent life. Yeah. It's a good life, but it's a violent life. <laughs> 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 you know, the, eventually somebody's going to kill you. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. life. Yeah. It's a slug life is really what it is. <laughs> I'm not sure if I would pick a tree just for this reason as um, obviously the cut down all the time. Um, and so that would obviously kind of ruin my sense of being a tree. <laughs> I guess I wouldn't want to be a whale because if you're always moving around, there's really no sense of home, mm. which I like having. Mm. Like, you know, like a home base. I guess if you're constantly moving around, you don't have that. Um, I wouldn't yeah. want to be a tiger because they are hunted. Like, there's lots of poachers out there. Um, there's more tigers in captivity than there are in the in uh, the wild right now, which isn't really cool. Yeah. Um, tigers are solitary animals. They're not, like, in, like, a pride, like a lion or a pack, like a wolf, you know? You'd be alone all the time. I wouldn't want to be a coral reef. It's, it's kind of the same reason shows. I would want to be one. I think it's kind of a... I don't know. Um, being what it is, it's kind of a harbor for the circle of life as a whole. So as much you know, life as you get to witness, you get to witness death equally. So and to be a telescope is there's a consequence with uh, the benefit of knowledge. In exchange for knowledge, you're alone. Aspects of it. And I guess in a way, because I celebrate um, others, I'm not celebrated in a way sometimes because it's a mirror and the mirror is just a thing. It's just something that is reflected. And once you shatter it, yes, it does get shattered, but once you try to pick it up, it, you know, it's going to cut you. So watch out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you don't have like your own identity. I don't have like my own identity. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, then I'd be an entrepreneur. Say it again so I can get closer. I would say an employee. I'm an entrepreneur of my... I'm not, I'm an employee of my entrepreneurism. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I really am, just what I want to be, but I would say entrepreneur. But I'm, I'm not sure if that's just because that's what I would... Wait, based on my answers? Probably be unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of hard for me to answer because... Think about our last topic, about our passion, our belief, I think based on my passion, I think I'd be an employee. That's kind of what I want to be. But at the same time, I think I'd have to say employee, kind of because, especially based off what I said about the court, it kind of, I kind of sound like a, like a civil servant or something. Based on my answers, I have to say employee, because I'm seeking knowledge for others. Okay. I'm definitely an entrepreneur. So I would say because they work for themselves, entrepreneur. Disagree with Josh? Yeah. I have to disagree with Josh's idea on, on music because, um, like you, you were saying before, one of the cons is you can be molded by anybody. Yeah. And you're everyone else's, uh, you provide, every, you work for everybody else's ideals, everybody else's thoughts and, and, and views on life. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say you're you're more of an employee mm -hmm. because anybody can mold. Mm -hmm. 
So you work for other people. When he talked about the coral reef, it is a coral reef, but the meaning behind to it for him was more like mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely, like you said? yeah. And I feel like for an entrepreneur, like they have to have a good mindset. Like friggin' Steve Jobs, he has to have come up with that mindset that he's going to make that happen regardless of mm -hmm. no matter what. And he changed other people's perspectives. So mm -hmm. I think that is an entrepreneur. Huh. Um, Go ahead. I disagree with Peters because everything he was saying was, was very independent. And the definition of an entrepreneur is someone who takes financial leaps of their own, out of their own pocket to, to benefit greater. You know what I mean? I mean? That's what a tiger has to do is take those leaps of faith that, that if he doesn't make it, it's only going to harm himself. You know what I mean? I mean, he's, he's going to be the one to pay that price. So, I mean, it, the, no one else is going to suffer for that. Or, you know what I mean? So I think that's why... A tiger would be an entrepreneur, not not an employee. Uh, I think with, uh, with puppy, it would probably be um, somewhere in the long, along the lines of like a form of take of a form of caretaker. <laughs> it's interesting because I was thinking, you know, you said sibling. Like I'm the oldest of ten kids, so I've always like shown concern, and care for everyone. Um, maybe I haven't gotten it back, but you know, I still do it. You know. One of my dreams is actually to be a doctor, or to be a teacher, so yeah, it's pretty so interesting that you have it all over. Yeah, but the, the puppy doesn't expect anything in return, it just mm -hmm. gives just it the love. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, um, like police officer, firefighter, those type of positions where... Jordan was dead on. Um, I initially applied for the police department, LAPD, and sheriff. No, I, I, I could see him as a writer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Even as a, yeah, uh, as some, even something as silly as the unicorn, there was still meaning behind that. It's, in, uh, it's also, like, I, I do love writing and, and conveying messages or things that I find within works and convey them as, as a message of, of what it reflects about humanity and stuff like that. Mm. You, you were saying coral reef because you want the mindset of affecting mm -hmm. others and others affecting you as well. And I think a good position for you would be probably a politician. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere along the lines of this thing too. I, yeah. I always, every time someone asks me what I want to be, I say king of the world. <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah, I, I ask them, I reply, like, king of the world. And then they look at me like, you're fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't think I am. <laughs> I don't think I am. You know, I never, I never thought about it. Well, actually, I have. I was like, well, you know, do I want to be president? No. Do I want to be governor? No. But I do want to be king of the world, you know, when I have that vision of what, what my future is going to look like, I, I seriously think of myself at a hilltop with all my people coming to me and just saying, what do I do? What do I do? And I'm just going to say, this is what you do. Uh, I definitely uh, think that, that what you guys are saying, right, there's a lot of tools to be, to like express your creativity or to be artistic. There's a lot of ways to do it besides just music. And... Um, when you guys alluded to influencing other people, and I think the when I when I'm reflecting on that, I'm thinking that not so much influencing people for the for the sake of manipulation or anything like that. Just uh, it'd be nice to put my human experience out there in an artistic way and have other people respond to it and say, "I feel the same way." And just that from past episodes and uh, you know <laughs> the car enthusiasm. I could I could see him being more having like a independent firm I guess for testing cars you know to be an outside source that says whether or not something's good mm -hmm. and not necessarily working for anybody just working for himself and just being you know um, a relied upon source whether or not something's good or bad. Mm -hmm. I know he loves driving cars and stuff, but I could also see him designing a car, or designing a building, or designing all these things, you know, with that independent thought of this is what I think is cool, and this is what I know is, has gotten me through this, or, you know, this is how I climb a tree, and this is how I hunt for my fish. You know, he designs tools, you know. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it, designing something or having my own, like, firm of, like, critiquing cars or whatever, which I think that's a really good idea. <laughs> I, I do like that idea a lot. I like, I like that idea better than working for a specific company and just testing their cars. The way that she describes the whale, 
um, not wanting to be objectified and, and, and having freedom, I see more of an activist or, a pro, or like a protester. Like I mean, the earth, you know what I mean? It can't speak for itself. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, that's why I was kind of saying a bird more than a whale. Um, I don't know if I have any, I mean, I don't know, I don't know you, but. <laughs> it sounds like you do. <laughs> Off their own aura and just I don't know you seem very earth oriented kind of so I mean that's just what is what is Marshall and how I met your mother he's an environmental lawyer. environmental lawyer yeah <laughs> that's what I see <laughs> so awesome. Mariah, how do you feel about what they're saying I think everything's right on <laughs> I spent my whole five years in college protesting and being an activist so I was like <laughs> Whenever I go back home to the Philippines, I would talk to like um, senior kids in high school to kind of just mentor them. Like, more like kind of to share with them like my experience here mm -hmm. and just motivate them to like, it doesn't matter if you're in a third world country, you can still do whatever you want. So. My thoughts is I come off with a lack of substance. <laughs> <laughs> if you just want to be a model or just an escort, there's not much to you. <laughs> yeah, it's like he's paid to live a lavish life. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I don't know. I guess there's no concrete... Uh, Jobs from that feedback. <laughs> Back to one foot. So, the business of selling himself. Yeah. Mm. Kind of just like putting your name on things and then like, getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> it goes back to the model. I see a critic. Mm. Whether it be for food or a hotel or a movie or whatever, you're getting paid to. Dine the best food and say whether it's good or not. Or go to the best hotel and say, eh, it's been better. You know what I mean? <laughs> and with tied into it, to being a whale, I mean, whales are kind of sought as uh, wise creatures and stuff and full of substance. And I mean, I, I definitely believe Sam has plenty of that observing. And I mean, it's, I mean, even if you watch Sam's eyes and, you know, the, the little things that he'll pick up, I mean, that, that shows that whether or not he's voicing it, there's some sort of critique going on inside of his head, which I'm sure a whale has just the same. So, I mean, maybe that's one way to interpret being paid to live the life. Just tell people, you're doing good. What's up? You're not doing so good. <laughs> All right. Um, recently, but, and I like Ben's um, ideas because I do find myself constantly observing everything. Um, I'm not extremely talkative, and so I, I, I mean, even if I am, I'm, I catch myself all the time just uh, taking everything in and observing and, you know, every aspect of my surroundings. So, I don't know, I thought Ben was pretty spot on. Wait, what? I just started slapping my name on stuff and charging. <laughs> <laughs> Four. Like, just going to have your head. I mean... This sounds kind of ridiculous, but I mean, people are explorers. They can go out, they have their team, and they're going to go find new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I saw. Like, that same thing with the telescope. The telescope's not deciphering the information. It's just like, hey, this is what's out here. You know, there's a planet, there's a star, there's some dust over here. That's what it is. You know? <laughs> you figure out what it is. Yeah, it's, it's actually good. Spot and I was thinking of um, if I was ever go if I were to go to physics, and uh, it would be research. I would would love to research. I mean, I've also thought about um, the study of, of people. I think it's anthropology. I was gonna say that when I was using the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs>
It was very interesting and it was so much fun to watch and to get to know these people and get to know their hearts and their thinking. I mean, how much of this information would we have gotten had we approached them and said, Hi, how are you? My name is Marilee. Um, what do you do? And then you, <laughs> you wait for their response as to the, the way they make money. And typically you have some sort of elevator pitch, you can talk about your company, you can talk about your product, you can talk about the services you provide, but then what? How do you make the bridge into friendship, into a real bond after that? See, it's very, very difficult. Typically it ends with, here's my card, here's my card, nice to meet you, all right, goodbye, and you never talk to him again. And the reason is because it didn't develop organically and unconditionally through love. See, what these people did, they came to the table and I asked them what seemed to be completely irrelevant uh, in questions. You know, it was just fun. And so they got to just reveal their heart and be creative with their mind and their answers and everybody is taking in that information and it's revealing a lot about their personality. And so now we could say, you know what, I know you. And now I'm interested because I really like you. So tell me, what is it you do? Now you transi transition into the, this is what I do for business. Hmm, very nice. So now you have a foundation of friendship. Of yeah. love. We're talking about just things that have nothing to do with money. Let's not complain about the lack of money. Let's not complain about... Um, where we aren't or let's not boast about the things that we do have and about our success we don't like that let's remove it all of that pretense and come back down to the innocence of children who have absolutely nothing but love to give they're the ones who make friends so easily correct so if you're trying to increase your business your network, your friendships, and find the perfect love. You must approach every situation open to that unconditional information, just saying, let's just play. Let's have a good time together. Let me find out who you are, and you find out who I am. And if we like each other, then we'll find out more, and we'll do business together. That's how you make your life. Beautiful. Cores aren't real. Plus, <laughs> <laughs> no, they seem very, very happy creatures, and they could, they could gallop, they could fly, they could kill people with horns. <laughs> what? <laughs> they have a horn. They gotta use it for something, right? What? Oh yeah. Like, yeah. why would unicorns kill? You don't know, they have to protect their rainbow territory or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> the more I think about it, music is very persuasive. I like that. I find myself to be a persuasive person, or at least like, I'm persuaded by my own opinions. <laughs> <laughs>